Welcome to the Short Score, the Team Roping Journal's weekly updates from the team roping world, including from Pro Rodeo, Major Jackpots, USTRC, and World Series of Team Roping Qualifiers, and more, with hosts Chelsea Schaefer and Caitlin Gustav. Hey, Caitlin. Hey, Chelsea. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the short score for the first week of April of 2019. Too bad this wasn't on April Fool's Day when this releases. I know. It is April Fool's Day while we're recording some pranks. I know. (laughs) I could make up a lot of inappropriate team roper pranks, but I ought not to at this point. We'll save it for later. Yeah. (laughs) Save it. Save it for another time. Well, Caitlin, what isn't a prank is that I we are shipping an issue, and I've been busy working over at Horse and Rider, so I don't have a great grasp on what's going on in Pro Rodeo, and that's why you're here. That is why I'm here. You're so important. <laughs> you I make am. this team roping world go round. VIP. You <laughs> are. So I need you to tell me what's going on. Well, for starters... For Rodeo Austin, Laramie Allen, he was a Resistol rookie in the Resistol rookie race last year. Mm-hmm. Him and Jace Davis, they won that. Their final steer, they were 4.6 on him, and they added $9,400 to their earnings. Money bags, that's Money awesome. Money bags, Good yeah. Good for those young guys. Yeah, so they won that. There was a ton of guys that moved up in the standings just from Rodeo Austin, which was awesome. Cody Snow and Wesley Thorpe. Just from Rodeo Austin, they banked $14,412. Tons of money. They ended up second in the finals there with a 4.9. Caleb Schmidt and Will Woodfin, they banked $7,326. I love watching Caleb Schmidt win in the team roping. He does good. I love watching Caleb rope. I think he deserves all the good things that come to him, so that's exciting. And good for Will Woodfin, too. Yeah, it's awesome. They moved up. Um, Caleb's now 39th in the standings, and Will's 21st. Watch out for that Caleb Schmidt in the all-around then. Right? Holy cow. He's up there right now. Good. Yeah. Um, then we have Brenton Hall and Chase Tryon. They bank $6,375. Uh, they're 26th and 25th in the world right now. Awesome. And that Brenton, I mean, he was so close to making the finals last year. Mm-hmm. Um, Especially as a resistor rookie, yeah, too. Yeah, that was exciting. And I mean, he's got Chase, who is just roping so good. Chase has been That's been an awesome partnership for Chase, so good to see that happening. Yeah, it's cool to see them continue on Mm -hmm. with their strengths right there. Mm -hmm. And then we have Peyton Emmett and Joe Day. They banked $5,594. They're 17th in the world and 27th right now, so that's awesome. Um, And then at Redmond, Oregon, uh, Jake Stanley and Justin Davis, who, if you wait at the end of this episode, yeah is on the short score. We have a lot to talk to Justin Davis about. We're going to talk to him about, well, actually, right now we've got a feature story up on our website about the top mares, which I'm Mm -hmm. so, I cannot wait for you all to see that. If you haven't gotten your March issue yet, which you definitely should have gotten your March issue Mm -hmm. by now, but maybe you haven't had time to visit with it. And there's a story on the greatest mares of all time. Justin has had a hand in a lot of them. So I'm excited to talk to him about that. And then we're also going to talk to him about the Brock Crest Memorial, which we are getting close to. Mm -hmm. Um, It's obviously a really important roping for the whole team roping industry, and Justin's an incremental part of it. And Justin just won Redmond, Oregon Mm -hmm. with Jake Stanley. So we'll talk to him about that. Yeah, and they're first in the Columbia River circuit right now, too. They Just from that win, they moved up to number one. Cool. I can't wait to see what Justin's got going this year. I'm really excited to talk to him. So I hope you all enjoy that interview. Oh, in the meantime, Caitlin, you went to the World Series of Team Roping this weekend in Eaton, Colorado. Can we talk about how much money you won? Nada. Not yet. Not no. Yet. <laughs> you know, I caught really good on my first run, and it, it just fell apart. It's fine. We're going to have Someday. a new segment of this podcast and be like... Can't catch Caitlin. Can't catch Caitlin. <laughs> but, you know, I cracked out my calf horse yeah. to head on. Mm-hmm. I haven't done that in a while, and he was rank. And then you went to the practice pen after the team I roping. did. I came home after the team repping and got on my actual head horse, and steer stopped a lot. Steer stopped a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, Definitely is- read that article we have up with Bobby Moe on Rady. <laughs> reading head horses. I, I read that daily. Good. Did it, did it help? Oh, yeah. We turned our last year, and he he was rating. That's good. Pretty good. That's good. Yeah. I um, 
Man. <laughs> okay, well, Caitlin, really <laughs> glad to know that you've got your horse all tuned up and ready to go. Yeah, we're ready. But it was a great roping. Yeah. It was a good turnout. A couple of my good friends won, a mm-hmm. couple of ropings, a couple placed. Definitely a good one. They yeah. at that Grand Hills Arena up in Eaton, Colorado. It was yeah. Great roping. Lance Allen, we always end up talking about your railings just because they are near and dear to us. I go to them, so. Yes, so. <laughs> good steers. They had pretty good steers this weekend, too. So good. That always helps. Good. I saw in that nine and a half, Jessie Miller, who's our friend here, lives right by us. She won. Western Wavelength Podcast. Yeah, on the Western Wavelength Podcast. Man, we should have included that in our podcast. Team Roper should be listening we to. We should have. But. Get, y'all, we're going to give you a heads up. The Western Wavelength Podcast with Jesse Miller. She won the nine and a half. Um, I forget what her partner's name Gunner was. Gunner Walker. Gunner Walker. Perfect. I was supposed to rope with him, and I ended up not going that day. Well, yep. There's your lesson. That's my luck. <laughs> <laughs> um, Great for them, though. <laughs> yeah, good for them, though. Um, but there were three girls in the top four in that rope, and so that was cool to see. I love seeing them. All the ladies doing awesome, so and and it was great to see all of our friends do well there this weekend. So, as far as the rest of the World Series goes, go to wstiroping.com, check out the schedule, get entered. Um, there's lots of good stuff coming up. It's getting to be super busy this time of year, so can't wait to see it. Oh, before we go, we do have to say Chad Masters and Joseph Harrison. They just won the Lone Star Open, which is not the same as the Lone Star Shootout, which I have to ch- keep reminding myself. <laughs> because they just have such a similar name. But the Lone Star Open is in Buffalo, Texas, sponsored by Lone Star Ropes. And Chad Masters and Joseph Harrison were the big winners there. They won a ton of money. Didn't it pay like 37000 35. 35,000. So, so split 17.5. Wow. That's awesome. Those guys were due for a big win. So That's awesome. It's great to see those guys mm-hmm. always up there. Yeah. Good people. For sure. Hey, don't forget, uh, the USTRC just got a brand new Instagram page, USTRC Official. Follow them on Instagram just so you can keep up with what's going on in that association. And you can look for the schedule in our March issue of for the for the rest of the year for the USTRC. Um, there's info on the U.S. Finals in the April issue, which kind of keep moving in that direction, kind of rolling out more and more information as it gets as it gets closer to time so to start entering. So. That's about what I have today, Caitlin. I think that's about it. Ready All right. to hear this interview. Yeah, everybody enjoy Justin Davis. Thank y'all. Oh. Hey, Justin. How you doing, Joe? Good. How are you? I'm good. What are you doing? You having business meetings? You're a busy man. I am. I'm driving around the state of Oregon right now selling cattle active. Oh, that's awesome. Very yeah. cool. I love that stuff. This Good is like enough. a free commercial for Zank, but I love Cadillac. No kidding. <laughs> you ever use Zestera on, you use Zestera on your horses? Oh, yeah. I use Zestera. I use Zestera and Cadillac, so we are regular customers of the Zankanella well, family. Well, that's good to hear. I'm the new West Coast region sales manager. You have a big kid job. That's exciting. I have a real big kid job. The <laughs> best thing about Matt Zankanella being your boss is you can still rodeo, too. Yeah, heck yeah. That's awesome. Good to hear it. So you're like, are you on the road throughout the week then visiting like clients, or what are you doing? I'm going to different ranches and different feedlots and dairies and cell barns and stuff like that and getting them guys on our program because we got we have a mineral program too so they got our gut health product in the drench and uh, and then the, the drench is in the mineral as well so we get it to the cattle year round and just keeps them healthier and they don't get sick and they gain more weight and the ranchers and feedlot guys love it that's cool very very cool well welcome to the career path my friend <laughs> no kidding uh, thanks for opening <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You just won Redmond, and you are winning your circuit. Tell me about Redmond this weekend, and then about your rodeo plans for the rest of the year. Well, um, like I was saying, the working and the rodeo goes hand in hand because you're not stressed out about winning at the rodeos to get to the next one and do the whole nine yards. And me and Jake Stanley are just an old team from way back, and um, I'm actually going to rope with Ryan Reed this spring in California, mm-hmm. uh, but I'd, I'd already talked to Jake about roping at Redmond first, so we stuck to our guns, and it worked out, but yeah, it was a good win. That's a good rodeo to start a year off out here, especially for someone like me who hadn't been rodeoing this winter. I flew to one rodeo in San Antonio, one around there, and then one Redmond, so I've been to two rodeos, and 
got a decent amount of money one after being the two rodeos, so it's kind of nice. I'm hoping I can just ease around out here this spring and maybe have a chance when Reno rolls around, then I'll, I'll enter hard over the summer in July and August. So who are you going to rope with the BFI with? I'm planning on roping with Ryan right now. With Ryan, so that you said this spring yeah. with Ryan, so I wasn't sure if that yeah. meant you were. Yeah, well, we're just going to start next week at Oakdale and see how it goes. If it goes good, we'll keep going. Cool. If it doesn't, I guess we'll, we'll figure something else out after that. What horse do you have right now? I think you've told me a little bit about it, but. I, I just got that little roan, uh, mm-hmm. call her Bliss, and uh, she's six years old. She's about all I got, other than my old horse, but he's 20. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, you know, I sold the sorrel mare, so I don't have her anywhere anymore. And so, um, you know, for being a six-year-old, though, she's she's as good as I could ask for mm-hmm. for having a young horse and putting that kind of pressure on her, be able to make those kind of runs. But I've kind of trained her to to be a rodeo horse, and she's turned out to be one. And you said she, Caitlin, was looking through photos to make a little teaser for the fact that we were going to talk to you today, and the photo she yeah. pulled was a picture of little Kim. Um, (laughs) so how many, you've had so many great mares and our top mare issue just came out. You're a mare guy, huh? Kind of on accident. You know know what's crazy is I never owned a mare in my life until I got little Kim. Mm -hmm. And I got little Kim in 2007 and then I followed it up where I got Shakira after that. And then I got this one. So there's only the three, only three mares I've ever had, but I've been fortunate. They were all pretty much great yeah <laughs> you're like batting a thousand I, in the mare thing that's yeah <laughs> yeah and like like this one here how i ended up with her was there was an old hall of fame branded cow horse guy in, in central california and his name was uh, benny Gatron. Mm-hmm. and he got cancer a couple of years ago and passed away but him and todd hampton were really good friends and todd would take him to his chemo treatments and uh, so as he as his cancer deal was going on he kind of weaned out most of his herd and he kept his two favorite mares the way Todd explained it to me and Todd bought one and I bought one and so it was just neat she was three years old never been roped on a day in her life when I got her and I bought her over the phone just by taking Todd's word he said trust me if you take this horse you won't be disappointed and I said "All right." and uh, she's just catty she's got everything you need she's got the moves she's related to my old horse Slim Shady and so you know she's a one time Pepto plus she's got uh, relation to him so he's I guess in human terms, he would be her uncle, <laughs> and uh, and I mean he he was as good of a horse as I ever rode. He I, I mean as far as I'm concerned, he was the best one I ever had. But mm-hmm. um, so that was re- really struck me about her as buying a three year old, and she wasn't cheap for a three year old that caught that that never been roped on. I was nervous about it. So yeah. the fact that she worked out was pretty handy, and I I, I, I kind of leaked her into my program a little bit last year because she was so good at a young age. I rode her. The first place I took her was Austin. That was the first rodeo I ever took her to, and I, I won. I placed in the first round on her, so I was like, man, she's a winner. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, and then I didn't ride her again until the spring, and I rode her at Red Bluff and Clovis and all them rodeos. I actually I won second at the Hork Dog on her. I'm like, here I am winning second at the Hork Dog on a five year old. So I was, I, so then I thought I better put her away. So I, I rode her at the BFI, and then I didn't ride her the rest of the summer until the fall. And then mm-hmm. I rode her, I placed on her at Ellensburg and I placed on her at Lakeview and those were the last rodeos. I, she had not been to a rodeo since Ellensburg on September 1st until Redmond this weekend. Is um is she smaller than the other ones? I mean, I can't imagine you get much smaller she's than Shakira. To, she, she's not real big, but um, she's thicker from top to bottom. She's Cool. She's, she's deeper. Like, I actually, I took her to the vet a month ago and they put her on the scale. She's probably only 14.1, but she weighed 1,100. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah, they were surprised that she was that much of a tank. She doesn't really look like, when you look at her, you wouldn't guess her to weigh that much, but that's what she weighed. She weighed 1,098. That's awesome. That's cool. I like little horses like that. Very yeah, cool. so I got to have one good one around. Otherwise, I don't, I, I, don't, I don't have a job in the rodeo world. If you don't have a good horse, you can't win, and you're only as good as what you're riding. I, I'm a firm believer in Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I've had guys try to buy her from me all the time, but I, if I sell her, I'm shooting myself in the foot. I don't have nothing to ride anywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you'd sure enough be a foot. Oh, man. Well, so tell me, though, you're busy. When you said you were getting into going into a meeting with somebody, I thought for sure you were planning something out for – the Brock Cresta. What's the game plan for that? When's, when, what are the dates and how, how's it going? How's the planning going? 
Well, to start off, I was in a meeting with the biggest ranch in the state of Oregon. They have 500,000 acres. Holy cow. <laughs> and, uh, and, but, yes, Brock's roping is sneaking up on me, and it's good this year. Uh, it's crazy how big that roping is. I mean, for the West Coast, you know, there's not a lot of big ropings out here other than the BFI. And, um, you know, now the Pickens is a good roping, and the West Star roping is a good roping, and, I mean, there's a couple others. But that one has gotten famous out here. People love it. I mean, number one, I think the setting, when it's, when it's at the ranch, the setting's pretty, and, you know, Brandon brings the best steers in the world. He'll he'll have, the thing about Brandon is he'll have a hundred some odd Mexicans, mm-hmm. and he'll go, uh, Mexican steers, and he'll go through them, and we'll whittle them down to 80 to where every single steer does the same thing. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, moving forward with that roping, though, we did the, the Pro-Am entries online this year, because we get, we, it fills up so much that the Pro-Am takes up most of the day, and we still have to do the open roping, you know, yeah, the yeah. main roping. So we limit it to 100 headers and 100 healers and do online entries from March 15th to April 1st, and they fill up the heading in one day. That is crazy. Most pro ams are, like, begging guys to come. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. Filled it up at 100 headers in one day. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and now the pro am guy, the the amateur side of it, are they like local people who knew Brock that that rope and means something to him? Is it um, just people a lot that of come? Them are, but a lot of them it's, it's changed around where you're getting out. I get people from Nevada. I just had a person call me right before I called you from Torrington, Wyoming, asking me about the rope and they're coming. No way! That's awesome. Yeah, the, because we have the junior NFR now as well. The day before on Monday evening. Okay. And so they. So they come, they can enter the junior NFR, they can enter the pro am, and uh, yeah, it's it's boomed. Oh man, I can't believe how, how big it is. But it's great, it's great, and you know, it, it keeps Brock's name alive and his legacy. And he's one of the most talented people with the hill horse and hill rope that I ever met. So it's it's good to see people not forgetting about him. You know? Yeah, absolutely. It's um, it's fun. It seems to be like we remember him in different ways every year. You know, I mean now. Spencer's little boy's name Brock and a whole nother like way to talk about him in a different different way he comes up in conversation now. It's it's nice. It's very nice. Yeah. And it's usually positive, you know, it's not nothing sad anymore. We've gotten kind of past that point. I mean, I still have my days once in a while, but um, anybody does, I guess, you lose your best friend or somebody yeah. that close to you, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well but it's it's been good now. I mean that roping's booming. We got coat saddles this year. Larry did a great job, made all the saddles for it. It's, it should be a good turnout. I've got a lot of phone calls. I know that they've, they've, the entries are up in the spring rodeos, so we should have a lot of teams in the open roping as well. As long as the weather stays good for us, uh, we'll, it'll be perfect. If it rains, we end up going to the indoor arena in Red Bluff, and so it's mm-hmm. just not the same atmosphere. Yeah. But we've only had to do that one time, so cross our fingers we don't have to do that any, again. Yeah, gosh, that's such a beautiful place. I, I love looking at those pictures for, and the videos from the from the ranch where you guys do it. It's just so Yeah, and, and X Factor's in a video this year. Oh, awesome. Good to know. And then it'll also be available to purchase on uh, Casey Jones' app, the Reach Out West app. Yep. That's perfect. So, yeah. So I love when Case it. goes to Ropens. It's like... It's like when when X Factor can go to roping, it's like the gift that keeps on giving. Like, because it, it's not just like a live feed of a short round. It's up there on the website forever, and you can keep accessing it. And I get little video clips from him of it. So I love it. I love yeah. when Pace goes. Let's see. Like I videoed the first year that we did it, and I don't know if you remember. We we had some DVDs, and and I tried to make it kind of like the Hork Dog video, and everybody liked it, but I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> and so mm-hmm. I had I hadn't really done it lately. I mean, we have a I had a local people come over, and they would video it and whatnot, and you could buy a DVD from them, watch your runs type deal. But mm-hmm. I thought, man, we need to get it back on there, and no later than I thought that that we needed to have it on TV somehow. Uh, Pace called me and wanted to come out, so it worked out perfect. Heck yeah, that's awesome. That really is perfect. Well, sir, I hope I get to see you in Reno. I'm sure I will. Oh yeah, yeah, I'll be there. I just, I, I hope I'm entered after Reno. I need to have a good <laughs> spring, and then I'll, I'll be entered up come July if I have a good spring. Awesome. Well, you've got a place to stay during Greeley. We are always looking forward to seeing you. <laughs> well, thanks, Chelsea. I appreciate it, and I'll see you guys soon. Thanks, thanks for Chelsea. Calling me. Absolutely. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. All right. Bye. Well, that is a wrap for the short score. I enjoyed it. Yeah. It's always nice to talk to you, Caitlin. Thanks. I appreciate you talking to me.
<laughs> All right, everybody. Have a great week. Well, oh, oh, before we forget, this week is a score week. It is. It is a score week. God. With, dang it, none other than the blaster. What? We just <laughs> talked to the Rodeo Houston champ at my kitchen table. And so I was going to hold off for a couple weeks for his interview, but I can't wait to share it with you guys because, you know, the Blaster has been, obviously, we've gotten to see him for many years here in Colorado. He's close to us. We love him dearly. But maybe the rodeo community as a whole hasn't seen Blaster for about a decade. Mm -hmm. um, not, not all the time. So I want you all to get to listen to his interview because if you know Blaster, there might be some things in here that are obvious. And then there might be some parts of this interview that are really surprising. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, Ty, thanks for stopping by the house. Um, thanks for visiting with me. It was early in the morning, and you drove many hours to meet <laughs> me, so I appreciate it. Thanks, y'all. Have a great week.